Let's imagine you are transported to ancient Pompeii. On your adventures exploring the city, you decide to grab something to eat at the Thermopolium, the Roman version of a fast food restaurant. And the owner, after serving you, says the meal will cost you one ass and a semis. No cents, no one and a half whatever currency unit, but one ass and one semis. The person next to you in line has asked for the same, and he has to pay the same. And he has just handled the innkeeper six tiny little coins instead of the two he's asking you. What's going on here? Today, we'll discuss the different denominations of coins the Romans used on their economic system, their values in relation with one another, take a tour of the imperial monetary system, look at some very pretty coins, and maybe try to learn something so we can pay what we owe to our innkeeper friend. Let's go! Hi everyone! It's all about Roman coins once again. Having a very complex economy, with many different things being bought and sold, the Romans had a very robust monetary system to allow that economy to move. And throughout their history of over a thousand years, the Romans used multiple different monetary standards. Today, we'll explore the most famous of these standards, the Imperial Monetary Standard, instituted by Augustus, which lasted for around 300 years and was notorious for its stability throughout the majority of these three centuries. As the Roman Republic met its end during the civil wars of the Second Triumvirate, Octavian, now Caesar Augustus, became what could be described as a monarch. He knew very, very well of his powerful position, and among many of his administrative reforms on the state, he decided to reform the Roman coinage as to give him even more power. His reform came in the shape of an organized trimetallic system with five coins made out of base metals, intended for low-value mundane transactions, a silver coin in its fraction for more substantial transactions, and a gold coin as the main store of wealth available, with its own gold fraction to close the gap between gold and silver. Previously, the emission of coins of all metals was entirely controlled by the Senate, but here's where Augustus really showed his skills as a politician. Now the Senate would only be responsible for the emission of base metal coins, while the emission of precious metals was entirely on the hands of the Emperor. And why is that very important? See, soldiers and generals are paid with good gold and good silver. A rich senator could very well raise and pay for a legion out of his own wealth and challenge the Emperor, but good luck trying to oust that Emperor when he has the treasury of the whole empire behind him, allowing him to control dozens of legions. The base unit of the system was the ass, a copper coin of around 12 grams and reasonable purchasing power on an urban environment. But let's take a step back and start by looking at the lowest denomination of the system. This is the quadrants, a tiny copper coin of around 3.5 grams worth a quarter of an ass. This is the atom of the Roman monetary standard, and was only really used either for very small transactions or as change for small purchases. The example we have here was struck between 41 and 54 AD under the reign of Claudius. On the obverse, we can read the legends Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus, and we see a modius, the standard measure of grain the Romans used. That's what you could realistically buy with these coins, very basic foodstuffs. The reverse features Claudius' titles on the legends. Pontifex Maximus, chief priest, Tribunicia Potestas, with the powers of a tribune, Imperator, chief of the military, Cos, consul, and we see the SC at the middle. Remember the Senate had been relegated to issuing the bronze coinage? So the SC means Senatus Consulto, or something like authorized by the Senate. This was a legal statement that this coin, even if it did not contain any precious metal in it, was to be accepted as payment and had its value pegged to a value in silver from other denominations in the system. 
Next, we get to a coin worth two quadrantes, a semis. And this is a curious little one because it is clearly a semis, but it was struck at the provinces. In particular, this is a coin from Hadrianoterai, a city in Asia Minor. Look how it was unusual gold-like, like it has this goldish tone to it. This is Orichalcum, a kind of brass that was worth twice as much as copper. So it had the same weight of a quadrants, but was tariffed at twice the value. On the obverse, we can see a bust that's supposed to be an incarnation of the Roman Senate. And on the reverse, we can see an image of Asclepius, the old Greek god of medicine, and the legends Hadrianoteraion, or from the city of Hadrianoterai. Now let's go over to the ass, the workhorse of the Roman copper coinage, worth two semis. Now we're talking about some more respectable amount of money. On the previously mentioned Thermopolium of Pompeii, where people would purchase ready-made food at the counter, one of the recipients was discovered with an entire hoard of bronze coins. Most certainly, these are the payment for the food people were picking up. And curiously, many of the coins in there were asses, which makes us think that an ass was enough money for one to buy their takeaway lunch. Let's get back to our coin over here. This is an ass minted under Emperor Trajan, between 114 and 117 AD. On the obverse, we can see his elegant bust in very high relief. I need to take a breath before these legends. Imperator Caesar Nerva Traiano Optimo Augustus Germanicus Dacius Pontifex Maximus Tribonicia Potestas Consul Sex Pater Patriae. Ooh, that's a lot. Or Imperator Caesar Nerva Traiano, the best emperor, conqueror of the Germans and the Dacians, chief priest with the powers of a tribune, sixth-time consul, father of his nation. I think Trajan had a very good self-esteem. The reverse, fortunately, isn't as exhausting. We see victory with the laurel crown, and the legends say Senatus Populusque Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. Once again, we see the letters SC. Another very common denomination of the aforementioned hoard was the Dupondius, a brass version of the ass with twice its value. You can generally distinguish between the two either by their color or by the spiky crown the emperor is depicted with. This is a Dupondius of Emperor Domitian, minted on 90 AD. Domitian doesn't have such an extensive title like Trajan, but he also likes his fair share of credits. We can read Imperator Caesar Domitianus Augustus Germanicus Consul Quindecim Censor Perpetus Pater Patria, or Caesar Domitian Augustus, also conqueror of the Germans, consul for the 15th time, eternal censor, father of his nation. I absolutely love the reverse of this coin. It reads, Fortunae Augusti, the good fortunes of the emperor. The allegory of Fortuna is seen on one hand holding a cornucopia, the symbol of abundance, and on the other, she's controlling a ship's rudder with her scepter. What does that mean? Fortuna controls our fates. One day, she can steer us to riches and abundance. But another day, she could very well change her mind and drift us away from it all. She controls abundance. Now, you don't need to be a specialist on Roman history to identify who that next gentleman is. Worth four asses, or two dupondi, the Sestertius is the most valuable of the base metal coins, weighing over 23 grams of brass and nearly 35 millimeters in diameter. This huge Sestertius of Nero, minted on 65 AD, is one very impressive coin to hold. They tend to be very expensive with collectors. And it makes perfect sense why these are expensive. Just look at how nice that coin looks. The white flan gave plenty of space for engravers to fully express their skills. 
on the reverse, we can see Nero's chubby laureate bust with the legends. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus Pontifex Maximus Tribunicia Potestas Imperator Pater Patriae. They really had a personal problem with the Germans, don't they? Every single emperor had Germanicus, conqueror of the Germania. The rivers has some nice little story behind it. The doors of the Temple of Janus, one of Rome's deities, were always open when Rome was at war, which was pretty much all the time. So when Rome saw itself in peacetime, the doors were closed by the emperor in fancy celebration ceremonies. Nero happened to have such an occasion happen in his reign, which he celebrated on this coin. We can see the temple with its doors closed and the legends. Pace Populi Romani, Terra Maric Partaianum Clusit, or Peace for the People of Rome on the land and on the seas. The doors of Janus are closed. What an elegant example of state propaganda. Well, we now have all five bronze coins and their relative values between one another, and we can get back to our Thermopolium scene. Remember the person next to us paid his bill of one ass and the semis with six little coins? These were all quadrantes. You get four to form an ass and two to form a semis. He must have had some, a lot of pocket change at home and wanted to get rid of it. If we preferred, we could also have handled him three semises, or if we handed him two asses, you would receive a semis as change. Most daily transactions back then were quite simple, but it can feel confusing for us as we have been dealing with a decimal system for around a century now. So how about we look at some precious metals now? If you gather four sesterti, you finally cross the barrier from fiduciary coinage into precious metals. And the denarius I've picked up for this video is from no one less than the reformer himself, Augustus. The man was a political genius, and this denarius shows it. Let me elaborate. Up to this point, we've seen every emperor making an attempt to disclose every single one of their conquests, their titles, and why they were important through their coins. Augustus does the exact opposite. Here we see a bust of a man without any legends at all. Augustus doesn't need it. Everyone knows who he is. And if someone doesn't know, then that person is not relevant enough. A clean, sharp-looking young bust of an emperor with his unruly hair, it's all that is needed to pass the message. The reverse is the coupe de grâce to ensure his div semi-divine nature. We see the legends, Caesar, Dewey Filius, Caesar Augustus, son of a god. That deified figure is Julius Caesar, still very fresh on the minds and hearts of all Romans when that coin was minted. And on the center, an image of victory, and she's stepping on nothing less than the entire world. Augustus needs four grams of silver and just three words to, to pass a clear message. I am the son of a god, and I have the right to conquer and rule the entire world. This is one of my favorite coins of all time, and it's a masterpiece of political propaganda of any age. The denarius had a small brother as well. This is the quinarius, worth half a denarius, or two sesterti. The quinarius existed since Republican times, and was still minted during the empire, but on very small issues. It was simply more profitable to the state to mint two sesterti in brass than to spend it on silver. This example is from the Republican area, but it will help us illustrate it. Minted on 98 BC and weighing around 2.2 grams, it features Jupiter on the obverse. Tiny little coin, but with a lot of detail and character. The reverse features victory, a military trophy, and a captive on the ground with his hands tied to, their, to its back. The legends, T. Clovi, for the mint official that was overseeing the issue. 
We now move to a denomination that was not originally on the monetary reforms of Augustus, but it is very widely known by the numismatic community due to their sheer numbers. With its characteristic radiated crown and a different shade of silver due to its low, slow debasement with copper, the Antoninianus was instituted by Emperor Caracalla as a form of increasing the cash flow to the imperial coffers. Valued at two denarii, the Antoninianus was issued with a weight of only one and a half denarius, representing an accident the emperor would then pocket and help it pay for its military expenses. Here's an Antoninianus of his successor, Elagabalus, minted at 218 in Rome. It features Elagabalus' bust with the legends Imperator Caesar Marcus Aurelius Antoninus Augustus, his official imperial name. On the reverse, we can see the incarnation of military fidelity, called Fides, holding an eagle and sitting between two military standards, with the legends Fides Exercitus, the, fi the fidelity of the army. The political instability of the empire was starting to heat up, eventually leading to the crisis of the 3rd century. Emperors tried to their utmost to win the favors with the military, and honoring them on the coin coinage was one of the very common ways they did it. So who knows, maybe this particular coin was at the pockets of a legionary. And we finally move to the big boy in town. If you put together 25 denarii, or 50 of the previous kinari, you could get your hands on an aureus, the gold coin of the Roman Empire, and the piece of maximum desire of any collector of Roman coinage. There were small issues of a fractional coin, a half aureus coin called the Quinarius Aureus, but these are very rare, rare, and I could not put together footage of one, so you will forgive me on that one. Now, let's go back to this golden beauty over here. Minted at 46 AD under Emperor Claudius, and weighing around 7.8 grams of very fine gold, the aureus was the main reserve of wealth of the empire. If you consider a manual laborer could expect to make a denarius a day, here we have nearly a month of purchasing power on the palms of your hands. This really speaks volumes to the concentration of wealth gold had and still has to this day. On one side, we see Claudius' official portrait with the legends Tiberius Claudius Augustus, Pontifex Maximus, Tribunicia Potestas VI, Imperator 11 or Tiberius Claudius Augustus, chief priest with powers of tribune for the 6th year, maximum chief of the military for the 11th year. The reverse has this very elegant winged deity, which is actually an amalgamation of two separate deities, Pax and Nemesis. Pax, as the name suggests, is the goddess of peace and Nemesis is the goddess of retribution. She is holding a caduceus and stepping on a snake, with the legends Paci Augustae, the peace brought by the emperor. From the humblest of copper coins, passing by the famous Denarius, to the majestic Aureus, the Roman monetary system was very complex and would not see something similar until the rise of modern monetary standards, more than 1500 years later. If you'd like to know more about each denomination, there will be a series of links to recommended literature at the description. I hope you all liked it, and I wish everyone good luck on their collecting of all Roman denominations out there, and that includes the Aureus. Now go out there and catch them all. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs>